Hello, welcome to this lesson on basics of perceptron in neural networks. So today we are going to talk about perceptrons. One thing I want to tell you is that perceptrons as a concept is not very difficult. In fact, it's one of the easiest topics in neural networks. It's as easy as saying find x when 2x plus 3 is equal to 6. So it's as simple as that. So let's quickly get into the discussion, but reminding you to subscribe if you've not subscribed and like this video if it's informative for you. What are we going to cover in this short time? We are going to look at basics, definition of the perceptron. Then we are also going to uh, derive or discuss the formula for the perceptron and then we look at activation functions and then we look at some other topics. All right, what is the perceptron? The perceptron is actually the basic unit of a neural network. So if you've heard about neural network, know that perceptron is the simplest neural network. It's a network that takes a number of inputs, processes it, and gives an output. So a neural network with just one neuron, remember, a network is a connection of several nodes and edges. But in case of perceptron, we have just one single node and that is a neuron. I remember also a neural network is a network that mimics the behavior of the network in the human brain. All right, so if we look at the, the figure there, you see that we have inputs x1, x1, x3, and we also have w1, w2, and w3. Now w1, w2, and w3 refers to the width of the edges. In the case of perceptron, the edges also have uh, weights or numbers assigned to them. All right, so this is the basics or the concepts, the basic concept of how perceptron works. Take series of inputs, perform some processing within the neuron, and then produces an output. Now, what formula holds the inputs and the outputs? And that is what we are going to discuss in this, in this part that says formula for the perceptron. All right. It's also as simple as you can think of. You can, you can easily say that, let's say y is the output and x is the input. So you can easily say that y is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3. So this is a valid formula that gives the outputs of this perceptron, okay? But the problem with this, out, this formula is that the output of a perceptron should depend not only on the inputs, but also depends on the weights. What we've written did not take the weights into consideration. So that is one of the problems we have in this very formula. All right, let's solve this problem by factoring in the weights. So we can now say that y equals x1, w1, plus x2, w2, plus x3, w3. So this is actually a beta formula for the perceptron. This is actually a better formula because this time we have actually factored in the weights of the various inputs edges. But there is also a, a problem with this, this very, very uh, formula we've written. The problem with this formula is that a perceptron should produce an output that is within a particular range. The output of a perceptron should be within a particular range. The formula we've written so far cannot, can just give us an indefinite amount of inputs. We want the range to be something like from 1, okay, from minus 1 to plus 1, or from 0 to 1. So we want something like this. Okay, so what it means is that what it means is that we need some kind of 
a function okay that will take this formula and then produce this range of outputs and that takes us to our next discussion of the activation function let's write the, the formula we have before now we have that y equals x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus x3 w3 alright so we want the range to be from minus 1 to plus 1 or from 0 to 1 so the function that can help us do that is called an activation function there are different types of activation function one of them is the logistic function the logistic the logistic function okay so the logistic function produces inputs from 0 to 1 from 0 to 1 so if we pass this formula into a logistic function will have 0 to 1 logistic function when plotted has a shape like this it takes from this is okay sorry not this takes from from 0 to 1 so when we have something like this okay uh, we have so the logistic function moves in this way from 0 to 1 and let me just tell you the, the formula for the logistic function is f of x equal to 1 over 1 plus exponential minus beta x where this is some coefficient so that is one another activation function will be the hyperbolic tangents the hyperbolic tangents and this takes gives an output from minus 1 to plus 1 and it has a shape like this from minus 1 to plus 1 okay so and the formula is as simple as just saying y equals hyperbolic tan of x okay so another function that can also be used that I'm not going to discuss you can read it up yourself is called rectified linear units so now aims uh, when we have this formula now we can now use it to modify the formula for our activation our logistic sorry the formula for the perceptron so what we'll now have is with something like this let's try to write the a modified formula for the perceptron will have something like this y equals we can now sum up okay w w i x i okay from i equal to 1 to n that is for all the inputs okay so we we now assuming that this is the function so let me just use a new slide to write it a little clearer okay so let me use a new slide so we have something like this 
the final formula will have will be y equals let's say this is a logistic function from uh, the logistic function it takes w i x i okay now we forget to put the sigma so we have w t x where w t is equal to w1 w2 w n okay so transpose so that it will be a column vector so in the case of x x is equal to the same x1 x2 xn i hope this is a little clear all right so this is something we have as a formula for the logistic for the for our perceptron but now we have also let me just mention the concept of bias the concept of bias is the threshold value the output must reach before it will fire or before it will get it to produce the output so if we, if we add the bias we will now have the formula to be this w t where w represents the series of the inputs x plus a bias b so at this point we have the formula for the perceptron i hope this is not too difficult for you so it follows from the definition of combination of all the inputs plus the weight and uh, multiply by the weights adding a bias remember that the inputs is a, a a vector a series of input vectors and for the w we change it to a column vector so that when we multiply we also have a a vector of output all right and we are adding this bias so that the output will fire when a threshold B is reached. We are using this function here to help us to provide an output that is within a particular range. So we have a particular range. That is why we added this. Alright, this is how we are going to round it off on the subject of the perceptron. So coming next will be basics of neural networks, multilayer perceptron, then we discuss back propagation, then we discuss gradient descent as the two learning techniques in neural networks. I would like to thank you for viewing. If this presentation has been informative for you, please subscribe, click on the subscribe button. If there's some topic you want me to discuss, can leave it there in the comment box below and see you in the next lesson.